Hi, I'm Jerry Mines. And I'm Deborah Mines. Welcome back to It's a Family Affair. And Jerry's going to tell us more about what it is to be a warrior if you're a man and a woman. I think these things can apply to women as well. Absolutely. But it's time we did it, dedicated yeah. a show to guys. Yeah, we're, we're looking at a movement in society currently um, that's about mentoring, that's about, um, you know, warriors teaching other men who want to get on the warrior's path how to accomplish that. And we began uh, in our first segment uh, with the eight steps along the warrior's path, and we mentioned responsibility and impeccability. Uh, and the third step along the warrior's path is truthfulness. Right. And truth is an interesting phenomenon. There's so many people trying to, you know, shove their truth down somebody else's throat. And that's not the kind of truth I'm talking about. That's little t, little truth. The kind of truth we're talking about is big T, and that's God's truth. And the interesting thing is that Scott Peck in The Road Less Traveled wrote about truth, and he said, you don't have to worry about proving your truth to somebody else. He says, if you're actually speaking truth, God's truth, it's magnetic. If somebody's listening to you and you're, you're expressing that in a non-toxic way, they will be drawn to that truth. It'll resonate inside of them because it's holographic. Truth is, God's truth is not just outside of us, it's also inside of us. And when we hear it, it resonates inside the chest and all of a sudden we're drawn to it. Yeah, and so, sometimes telling the truth means that we have to get in touch with the ugly little truths about ourselves, yeah. our mean-spiritedness, our injury, mm -hmm. um, our jealousy. That's it. Our, uh, panic and fear if we're not good enough, our shame about ourselves, the injury uh, that we've suffered in our life that has caused us to be mean and small-hearted. And in the 12-step program, there is a step where you will really take a fearless moral inventory of yourself mm -hmm. within the context of healing, that you know that you could be a better man, a better woman, right. and that that is a larger self uh, than the one that's currently doing business that, got, that crashed and burned. Yeah. And you, you really name these things that are wrong with you. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, you know, you go to the doctor and you have warts removed. I mean, you don't want to keep them and cherish them. You, you want to say, I, these are things about myself that are character flaws, and I need to look at them, and I need to tell the truth. And there's a strength in encouraging in a group when men yeah. start speaking their truth. You know, I really fell off the wagon, or I really felt like I, I wanted to be violent this week, and I really had to call my sponsor. I had to slow down and examine with truthfulness what the repercussions of that action would be. Uh, that They give heart to other men that know that you stumble as you're going along this path of truthfulness and you have to correct yourself a lot. You know, babe, these men's groups are, are phenomenal in the sense that in those rooms, um, truth is the rule of the room. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, men who are further along the warrior's path who are, you know, ready to do that fourth step and take that fearless moral inventory, do a great job, but it's the new guys that come in that are really not ready to be truthful. Well, they've rehearsed the BS so long it's become truth, and you can actually do that. We can yeah, all the do denial that. story, it's called. And yeah. there's a BS meter in the room because um, <coughs> men are going to recognize the BS, they're going to confront it. And they're going to help those new guys kind of get on the path of truthfulness. Yeah, it's like a, my dear departed friend Jim Williams used to say, a great recovery counselor, he said, you can't BS a BSer. Yeah. I mean, if you've been one, you kind of go, that stuff <laughs> stinks. I've done it, and I can pick it up in a New York minute. You know, babe, the fourth step along the warrior's path is losing self-importance. Yeah. You know, that narcissistic, I, me, me, my, I'm so important and everything, you know, in the world revolves around me. Um, the, the the reality is is that one life is no more important than the other, and our life, in very real terms, is no more important than the lives of other living creatures on this this planet. And so, once uh, a person gets beyond that, you know, their own navel and their own obsession with self, then they really begin to make their own growth. Uh, a project. And their love matters. I mean, in addition, the irony is while on some levels you're just the same as everybody else, you have a unique con contribution to the world when you can figure out what matters and your love matters. You can change the world with the way you treat yourself and other people. There it is. 
You know, Deb, the fifth step along the warrior's path is abandoning personal history. Mm -hmm. um, you know, last week you, in our show about anxiety disorders, you mentioned something about uh, dropping the story, you know, getting out of the, the, the drama in our head. And very often our personal history is nothing more than a drama. And, and often men who are in a lot of pain come in with this drama we refer to as a script. And these scripts, you know, have a beginning, middle, and an end, and they're usually negative. Mm -hmm. So if, if a person can abandon their personal history and begin fresh one day at a time to, you know, create a new story, uh, they can do that by following these steps of responsibility, impeccability, truthfulness, losing self-importance, and their future can be more warrior-like uh, than the way it's been in the There's past. There's another way of telling stories, too. I mean, everybody's been victimized on some level. Uh -huh. um, it, it, it's important to know your personal history, but it's important to see that maybe your camera angle on it is limiting you that you're always the victim, you're, you know, it's, uh, somebody's always stepping on you and nobody ever cared about you. That can be very limiting because when most people tell their stories, they'll find that there was a graceful period or there was a good teacher or there mm -hmm. was someone who cared or there was an opportunity that they overlooked. Right. And so you begin to see your story uh, from like panning out yeah. from that little self-involved, I feel so sorry for me standpoint and getting up to the place I have self-compassion and I also have other compassion. There That's how you really pan out. And then life becomes art. You know, you can live it as if you're painting uh, a portrait of who you want to be and how you want to be. Oh, that's the best out. part. Yeah. You have the brush, my there friend. And we all do. We can become a victim or we can become a victor. And that is a moment by moment, day by day choice. What's been done to you uh, can become the story of your heroic overcoming. Yeah. Or you can just be another one of the masses who become asses. And, and we're going to talk about those folks. Uh, they're, they're, they're called phantoms. You know, nine out of ten people on the planet are phantoms uh, stumbling through oh, life. I hope it's not life that many. is happening to them. And then that one out of ten are warriors. And the warrior's path is so important. In fact, Deb, the next step, step number six along the warrior's path, is incredibly important. And it, it's no bad faith. And, and bad faith is something Jean-Paul Sartre talked about when he, he said you, you want two diametrically opposed things at the same time. You want your, you know, your wife and then you want your girlfriend. Or, uh, and in fact, what Sartre said is that ambivalence is an invariant structure of reality. We're always ambivalent. Warriors do not indulge in bad faith. Warriors make a decision, i.e. a commitment, and never look back. They do notice that the ambivalence, uh, the negative side of the ambivalence is always there to tempt them, uh, to deter them, uh, to seduce them, but warriors don't indulge in the negative side of their ambivalence. They keep their focus, their intentionality on the commitment and the decision that they made in their life because ultimately, as Sartre said, we are what we do. And if we're paper in the wind and blow whichever way the wind blows and, and let life happen, you know, to us instead of through us, then we're not warriors. Mm -hmm. We're more like the phantoms and the fools that are just stumbling through life. So water the garden that you've chosen. There Take it is. Take a sad song and make it better, said Paul McCartney. Yeah. And you know, Deb, the seventh step along the warrior's path is balance. And Don Juan, uh, you know, had this incredible quote, and he said, the, the art of a warrior is balancing the joy of being alive with the terror of being alive mm -hmm. because they're both there. Uh, Jung would talk about Carl being able Jung. to contain those opposites, you know, the, the, the light side and the dark side, and then being aware of that uh, doesn't necessarily pull us into the darkness. It allows us the freedom to choose who we want to be and what we want to do. Don't get too carried away with the Buddha's teaching. Don't get too carried away with either side. They're always going to be there. Right. One is at your bed, the other is at your board, says Khalil Gibran. They, it's, a, it's this kind of a world. And then in the middle balance place, there's true wisdom because you can see that your actions can have positive and negative effects and you want to be aware of that. Absolutely. You want to be aware that even while you're, and you don't want to be overly idealistic, like you can choose anything and it'll turn out right. You can run away from your marriage and it'll all be perfect. No, there's suffering. Learn from the path. Yes. And we really are a maverick generation. We may not have had the elders before us, but we yes. certainly have the resources 
to learn from elders who've left behind books, poems, ideas that we can emulate to rise to the occasion. We really need to rise to the occasion right now. Absolutely. We have to get out of our little adolescent self and become grown-ups, and that's really hard. Ooh, boy, and not lose our joy. Yeah. Boy, that's, that's cutting-edge stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you can keep the playful child within, but you might have to give up uh, being Peter Pan. You might have to leave Never Never Land mm -hmm. <laughs> and grow up and become the warrior that we all need you to be. Remember that people are depending on, on you. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, Deb, the last uh, step, the eighth step on the warrior's path is what uh, Don Juan called seeing, in quotes. And seeing means stopping the world, i.e. stopping the internal dialogue, which tends to you know, fill in all the blanks and create this storybook movie, this script, you know, this negative script. And when we stop the world, we stop perception and we experience our perception, which is a direct apprehension of reality. Now, every one of you ha has done that accidentally, where all of a sudden you just knew somebody had a good heart or just knew they were evil or manipulative. And trust that intuition because that's the aware mm -hmm. ego noticing truth that needs to be honored and of course on the warrior's path you can develop this skill of stopping the world so that in fact you can see and know truth and know reality without your internal dialogue and nonsense and your movie getting in the way yeah that's well, Deb, important I, yeah. I, I wanna I wanna just suggest that in our men's groups and in our, our own individual and couples counseling, we teach the tools people need to get on the warrior's path. I want to thank you for tuning in. I'm Jerry Mines. And I'm Deborah Mines, and it's been a family affair.